Hello everybody, my name is Mr. E and this is my very first reaction video. I know, I know, how exciting. Uh, today we're going to be looking at something very, very interesting. This is a piece by uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson. Uh, was Karl Marx a Satanist? So you can tell like right off the bat, just from the title, this is going to be very, very exciting. Um, and he's got with him another doctor, Dr. Paul Kengor. All right, so I'm not going to waste any time. Let's just jump straight into it because I'm sure it's full of gold as to why Karl Marx is so goddamn evil. All right, here we go. I don't know why he turned to atheism. These poems that he wrote that were pans to, to Mephistopheles, is that after he becomes an atheist? No, he's writing, so the first one was 1837, wrote another... So Mephistopheles is a uh, fictional character who I believe represents the devil or acts on behalf of the devil. Um, In 1841, he wrote a bunch of them. Right. He did, um, he did a, uh, just a chilling play yes. called Ulanem. Yes. Um, O-U-L-A-N-E-M. And people that are watching that... What a sick name, by the way. Don't you reckon? If they now type into their computer, Ulanem, even in Google, it'll pop up, played by Karl Marx. Yeah. It even has a Wikipedia entry. And uh, let me warn <laughs> not people, you might not want to do on. this, but if you click the images button, you will see, I mean, you will see, I mean, there's some satanic stuff up there from like. All right. I didn't want to have to stop it so quickly, but like, look, satanic stuff sign of the cross, etc., etc. You can tell right now how objective this is going to be. It's not going to be objective at all. It's, it's really quite unfortunate that you have two people that I'm assuming are intellectuals because of the doctor in title in front of their names. Um, you, you're assuming a level of, yes, some type of rational or logical train of thought here built on, like I was saying, uh, I don't know, an objective um, response uh, to Karl Marx's evil um, media and content. But like, you know, sign of the cross. Like, I'm sorry, look, I'm not against someone having religious beliefs, but they're, if they're going to bring that into a criti critical analysis of why someone is a Satanist, um, then I hope they were leaving out kind of their personal biases as much as possible. But, uh, you know, I always stand to be corrected. So... Here it is. Let's keep going, shall we? Like, not heavy metal, but like black metal groups. So Ulanem oh. is an anagram for Emmanuel or Emanuelo. Right. So right. Marx takes Emmanuel, which is the name given to Christ, or Manuelo, and he flips it into this anagram called Ulanem. And it's huh. this chilling play. The main character is Lucindo, Lucindo. Yeah. See, like, by today's standards, like, that's not that hardcore. Like, the, he's even referencing there, like, heavy metal bands and stuff like that. People are using kind of Satanist imagery um, and, like, Antichrist kind of culture um, to get kind of these hardcore messages across. If anything, he's just kind of, like, ahead of the curve as to what was coming in the 20th and then the 21st century. Like how, like, would you, would you stop a heavy metal band today and be like, you, you're evil, you're a Satanist. No, it's part of their, their persona, their, their shtick. Like it's, uh, ooh, straight away, this is, this is not looking that great, whatever. L-U-C-I-N-D-O. And uh, you just can't believe what, what, what you're reading with uh, with 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 this play mm -hmm. so that that was written later in the 1840s so really the prime of his writing including the decade when he wrote the communist manifesto is also the same decade uh when he was writing these 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 poems um, and plays and plays yeah. and plays yeah. and, and throughout plays. his life his kids cool. and others would say uh, yeah, he had a favorite line always from Mephistopheles. Right, right, Everything right. that exists right. deserves to perish. So that Oof. remains a part of him uh, through, throughout his life. Oof. Did you, um, did you hear Peterson just then? Edgar Oof. Oof. Yeah, he felt that. He felt that real good. Uh, you know what? This is going to be funny, actually. Um, I'm going to stop being cynical, and I'm just going to actually enjoy this. has a letter where he addresses his father as my dear devil, which 
I don't know. Maybe it's playful. I don't know. Yeah. Ha, Although ha. I would never. You know, I don't know. I'm just asking the hard questions here, man. I'll call my dad, my dear devil. Mm. His wife called him uh, uh, my wicked knave. I, I quote uh, Henrik Heinzen. Uh, referring to him as a goblin right. who tried to get take me under under, under his spell. Um, other cases of, of where of where he's using that kind of language. Uh, um, when Ingalls first met him, he describes him as this dark man from Trier, um, who hops and leaps and springs on his heels. The um, the the monster of ten thousand devils. He describes him, yeah. and the and the letter from his father is um right, i'm just gonna stop it here because look we're talking about people that are coming from or like they're writing things like you know what 150 years ago 200 years ago writing styles were very different back then and people used a lot of poetic language to describe situations and people so this is what they're they're massing their argument on like oh come on Talk about flimsy. Which was written in 1837, a year be, a year before before his before his father died. So his father writes to him, March 2nd, 1837. Carl, at times my heart delights in thinking of you and your fortune, and yet at times I cannot rid myself of ideas which arouse in me sad forebodings and fear when I am struck as if by lightning by the thought. Is your heart in accord with your head, your talents? Has a room for the earthly but gentler sediments, which in this veil of sorrow, it's a beautiful letter in many ways, are yes. essentially consoling for a man of feeling. And then this question from the father uh -oh. of Karl Marx to his, to his, at this point, 18-year-old son. And since that heart, Carl, 18 years old, this is a letter between parent and child, child being 18 year old. Okay, let's just let's just keep that in mind. This will be good. Is obviously animated and governed by a demon, mm -hmm. not granted to all men. Is that demon heavenly or Faustian? Mm -hmm. Will you ever, and that is not the least painful doubt of my heart, Will you ever be capable of truly human domestic happiness? Will, and this doubt has no less tortured me since I have come to love a certain person like my own child. Will you ever be capable of imparting happiness to those immediately around you? By the way, the answer was no, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Well, but, no, but that obviously phrase, the father since, had intimations of that. Yeah, and since that heart is obviously animated and governed by a demon not granted to all men, is that demon heavenly or Faustian? Right, That's his right. dad. Yeah. Wow. No, actually, let's see what they say first. And, and there's only so many of those things, I think, that a sympathetic uh, Marxist or Marxist biographer can shrug off. I mean, there's just so many statements like that from him and people about him and people who knew him, and loved ones, and a, uh, a, a wife, a son, a best friend from Ingalls, okay, and then so the different writings. Woo! Okay, so let's 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 attack this. Now was he a Satanist, right? Well, let's attack this. See, look, Peterson, like far out. He just wants some dirt on Marx. Doesn't care what it is. He will take it. It doesn't care, doesn't matter how lowbrow it is. Like, look at our mate over here, Dr. Paul Kenga. Like, what's he talking about, honestly? Like, he's he's just read a letter from a father to an 18-year-old child who has described his son as being plagued by demons. Now, like I said before, you know, 200 years ago, language very, very different. People used a lot of religious allegory to describe situations and stuff like that. Like, honestly, very, very different time. People were more poetic in their language as well, and they would describe things in great metaphors. So like a, a, a parent, right? This is, this is what this argument is boiling down to right now. A parent and a bunch of friends and colleagues describing someone as a demon. Let's just go with the parent one. A parent saying that their 18 year old son is being you know, plagued by a demon is, is not groundbreaking. Like honestly, do you know how many parents have described their 18 year old sons 
as being, you know, possessed by a demon. Like, I think that's just normal, actually, for parents to be so concerned about the behavior of their boisterous 18-year-old children that they would describe them as being possessed by a demon somehow. This is just, like, is this it? Is this what they're really going to structure this around? Like, far out, lowbrow. Like, come on, Dr. Jordan Peterson. I expected more from you. Well, that is a whole different thing that, I can't personally answer. Well, it seems not unreasonable to presuppose that he was a devotee of the Mephistophelian ethos. Yeah, I think that's a right. So really the question good way to put is, you know, what constitutes a Satanist? Well, someone who generates a murderous doctrine, that, that raises <laughs> questions. I mean, dead serious about. Oh, here it comes. Murderous doctrine. All right. Why is it a murderous doctrine, Dr. Peterson? Please tell us. Like right, right. The most murderous doctrine ever promoted in the in the roughly Judeo-Christian context by by a large margin. So, by and by what measure? Like, where are you getting that kind of that overarching and massive statement and assumption there? Like, what numbers have you crunched to figure that out? And in the judo Judeo-Christian um, context, as you've described, like honestly. Honestly, where have you got those numbers from? Like, let's look at the Bible then, shall we? Have you sat down and crunched the numbers on all the people that have used some passage in the Bible or the Bible as a complete work to justify the killing of thousands, if not millions of individuals since the dawn of Christianity? And uh, do you describe the Bible as some type of, I don't know, uh, evil doctrine? No, it's usually, and you know, as Peterson is usually a defender of, you know, Christian tradition and the Bible specifically, constantly talking about how people take it out of context, he would be the first to attack someone and defend the Bible saying, no, the people that have used it like fundamentalists that have taken things out of context or used it to um, justify the killing of innocent individuals, they were wrong, but there's nothing wrong with the Bible itself. What he's doing is talking about Marx's work and his literary contribution to the world as being nothing but a bloodthirsty doctrine that has like with its sole intended purpose and nothing else led to the death of millions of people. Like this document has got, or his body of work has got up and killed, you know, a hundred million people. Like this is just part of his big tirade and he'll get anything that he can get to smear the name of Marx. And like, look at this guy that he's sitting next to, seriously. Oh man. I would say it's incumbent on those who would defend him to describe why we wouldn't just assume that. But the, like... Why we wouldn't assume it. Thank you, Peterson. You just justified my little tirade myself over there. It's just an assumption. Like, far out. For a man of science? Hey? Hey? Yeah. Assumption. Naughty boy. The part of the reason that I was so interested in talking to you was because I felt that what you documented in your book was extraordinarily telling from the psychological perspective because I know how these things work. And it, it is not something that can be overlooked that that, that that was his favorite quote. Right, right. I mean, not, especially not when you understand Goethe's centrality yeah. in the German intellectual tradition. That's like having a favorite quote from Shakespeare, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it's not any old quote. It's the <laughs> central credo of Mephistopheles. So that's <laughs> right. extraordinarily telling. Now, okay, now I do have another... Can, can I give yeah. you a... Yes. So, so Robert Payne, the very serious academic, no right-winger, British man of letters, the guy who really broke this first in his 1968 biography of Marx, all right? His chapter where he talks about this stuff is called, is called The Demons, in his mm -hmm. Marx biography. Mm -hmm. Now, he wrote this, and I'm not saying that I endorse this. As an academic, I can't say if this is correct. I'm not saying that I endorse this at all as an academic, but I'm going to read it anyway and just use it to ram home my point. But, like, I base it on absolutely nothing. There were times when Marx seemed to be possessed by demons. That's what Payne wrote. And 
Now this I would at least There's the possession by demon things again. Like honestly, people used language very differently before. And like there was a lot more of a religious kind of backbone to society. And like describing someone as, you know, being plagued by demons is like how we would say today, like off the cuff, oh, this person's got issues. Like far out. Talk about taking things out of context. Or endorse. Marx had the devil's view of the world and the devil's malignity. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he seemed to know that he was accomplishing works of evil. I think that gets closer to it. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Pastor Richard Wormbrand, who wrote the famous book, Tortured for Christ, and was tortured for Christ in Romanian prisons by uh, communist captors who were shouting, I am the devil, while they were torturing him. Mm -hmm. He did a book mm -hmm. called Marx and Satan. He's convinced that Marx was a Satanist and did some things ritualistically that it might have even been satanic. Mm -hmm. But I can't I can't say that. I can't endorse that. But you that. see evidence of that in his I've play. Never, I have never right. seen In yeah, terms well, of at least right. his fantasies. That's right. You know what I love? How like this guy <laughs> keeps talking over the top of Peterson. Oh no, he just won't let Peterson say anything. And Peterson, God, you know, he could talk underwater, that guy. And it's, it's funny to see someone shut him down on his own show. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. In fact, Payne even goes so far as to say, Vladimir Lenin, right? There's a statement from Lenin which said, um, when I was a teen, I broke from all religion. I took the cross from my neck and I threw it in the rubbish bin. Mm -hmm. And and Payne has a quote where, not Payne, uh, Richard Wormbrand, where I think um, I think he believes that Lenin even stomped on it. He says, mm -hmm. well, that's a satanic ritual. I don't know. <gasps> he stomped on it? Oh my God. Are, are we talking about Lenin or are we talking about Marx? Like honestly, which one? Like far out. God, these guys are so inconsistent. I don't know that it is or not, mm -hmm. but there's another case of Lenin who at least did the work of the devil. I mean, Lenin had, according to Robert Conquest, W.H. Chamberlain, the first historian of the Russian Revolution, 500,000 people were killed from 1917 to 1923 mm -hmm. under Lenin, not mm -hmm. even including the Russian mm -hmm. Civil War. Mm -hmm. If that's not the devil's work, mm -hmm. I don't know what the hell it is, right? Killing people is the devil's work and like by large numbers, that's the measure here. So again, like if we take it back to the, the whole um, conversation about whether anyone's killed anyone in the name of the Bible, like, do you think then that the Bible is the devil's work? Like w the logic doesn't kind of match up when you try and apply it to other things. This is, oh, far out. It, but but I think uh, what Payne said in the latter quote, the devil's view of the world, the devil's malignity, and at the very least, this identification with kind of devilish-like um, destruction, right? Tearing everything down, rebelling against the world, everything that exists deserves to perish. Um, mm -hmm. That at least. And then the ideology that he created that just happened to be responsible for the deaths of over 100 million people in the mm -hmm. 20th century, mm -hmm. you know, more than World War One. The ideology that he created. Like, this is another good one. See, Marx, for a lot of people, seems to be like the creator, the the yeah, the sole creator of communism and socialism and all of the societies that have attempted to, uh, I guess, bring in, um, yeah, uh, social constructs with this kind of thinking uh, as their ethos and as their objective. And like he just keeps getting pinned, Marx keeps getting pinned as the yeah, the sole creator of all of this understanding and perspective of the world. But like he, what, what? he didn't create communism and he didn't create <laughs> socialism either. Those concepts were well alive before he was born and they were being developed before he started writing and developing his own theories on things and again they've 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 said it again they've attributed to him the deaths of you know a hundred million people maybe more i don't know maybe a billion who knows he could have wiped out the entire human race we're not sure right now we're not really talking about facts here we're just stating interesting interesting things which are all based on assumptions as we've already said so like oh man I don't even know where to start with this, but I, I really thought that Peterson was, um, I don't know, more intellectual than this, but like he's right down in the gutter at the moment trying to fight his own ideological war against Karl Marx. And we're going to have to talk about why he's actually doing this at all.
we'll, we'll get to that. World War II combined. So that ideology was pretty hellacious. Mm -hmm. yeah, to, yeah, to say the least. Okay, so, and I think it's very naive not to assume that the events that we described in Marx's life are not connected. Right. Yeah, right. correct. And that, that, that his economic polemics were somehow independent of his poetic imagination. Mm -hmm. It's like, obviously they weren't because they wouldn't have had that motivational force. Mm -hmm. So they were calling on dark forces, obviously. So, because otherwise they wouldn't have compelled people in that mm -hmm. manner, especially not toward the, that sort of immense sadistic murder. They were calling on dark forces. I think what they're misconstruing, here, no, no, or purposely construing, is that they're calling on, or people calling on violent forces, and then describing that as being dark forces. Like, I don't know where to start with that one, but let's just look at the antithesis of, you know, socialism and communism being capitalism. Um, for the sake of this discussion, violence is very much in the playbook of capitalism, colonialism, capitalist imperialism, all that type of stuff. So if we're going to use violence as, I don't know, the marker of what is a dark force, then these two have got a lot of explaining to do when it comes to looking at, you know, the free market ideology and the ideologies that come about under a capitalist mode of production. Far out, man. Utterousness and utter destructiveness. And of course, get to the hatred of God, which all the yes. communists did. So all the communists thereafter... Yeah. Here's the real issue, the hatred of God. Seek religion. Right, right. right. Atheists. That's like, right. They're not exactly atheists, yeah. because they're well, trying to stomp something out. That's right. It's not just... It's not just... It's not a, a neutrality. That's right. It's not a neutrality mm -hmm. toward religion. It's not irreligion. It's not separation of church and state. It is militant, aggressive atheism. Trotsky and Lenin create the League of the Militant Godless. Right. They ban religion. They have the Moscow church trials. They blow up churches. They jail priests, right? Um, you know, the, the souls and its rights in the Gulag. They blow up churches and they jail priests. This sounds like, I don't know, a, an Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, action movie. I'd like to see that. Like, honestly, they should redo the Russian Revolution kind of movies the old ones um and yeah like get Arnold Schwarzenegger in there um a lot of grenades throwing around rocket launches things blowing up in the background Michael Bay can direct it it'll be great archipelago they put nuns in special sections of the gulag with prostitutes yes right right, right deem right, them right. horse yes, to Christ. absolutely Lenin said all worship of a divinity is a necrophilia there is no again Lenin why are they talking about Lenin I thought we were talking about why Marx was a Satanist Nothing more abominable than religion. Yeah. So they they don't just try to stop religion. They they want um, Pol Pot, the Buddhist monks in Cambodia, yeah. to renounce their vows, yeah. Yeah. to marry. Yeah. It's not enough for them to be quiet. And so well, after I don't, four I don't years, know how you can separate a militantly anti-religious atheism from. From, especially, say, within a Christian context, from something approximate s satanic ideology. Yeah, because right. I, don't see how, I don't see how conceptually that separation is possible. It's one thing to be atheist in the manner that leaves people to go to hell in a handbasket in their own way, but to be actually an enemy of the religious enterprise, mm -hmm. that's a purges. whole different thing. It is. So... Yeah. And on that. So being an enemy of religion and the idea of religion, like the institution of religion, that is evil. So being atheist is okay because you're neutral and you do nothing but, you know, just go about your own business. But once you take up a contrary position to religion and try to fight against it, then you are evil. And by whose account here? By religious types. Those are the types of people that are judging who's evil. And then I think they're going to try and make the claim then that he's a Satanist because he is anti-religion or the people that followed him. It's actually, no, not even him. These are people that followed on from him and, you know, subscribe to his ideas. They are evil because they are anti-religion. So that's the real qualifier here and that, i think that's what we're getting to here 
with oh you know him being a satanist is just because you know people that are religious don't like what they did to religious institutions obviously marx and the communists were obviously that clearly obviously and and so, and, and, and and satan might say i don't care if you believe in me or not you're doing my work man I yeah, mean, well, that is shutting down churches, well, blowing up churches. It also okay. and can I just take a moment to real like? Can we just acknowledge here that they are now putting themselves in Satan's shoes? Like, look, I can I can work with the whole like you know godly kind of thing and and like you know atheism is there a god out there and like you know and and no there isn't so they take up a contrary position on that basis but like now they are pretending to suppose what the devil would say and would have loved to have had Marx and all of his followers in his corner. I'm glad they're putting themselves in the devil's shoes after, you know, 10 minutes of listening to them bag people that are associated with the devil. That also touches on the issue of what it means to believe, right? And I mean, you could imagine someone comparatively harmless who toys with ritualistic satanic activities in a sort of dramatic manner mm -hmm. and then you could imagine someone who tortures nuns and priests and burns down churches but forgoes any technical affiliation with satan right i would say that the latter is the, yeah. the satanist in a much deeper sense than the former That's not right. that what the former is doing is excusable yeah or at least satanic yes right but right. but to 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 do what the communists did to the religious so it's only satanic because they're doing it to religious people so you can torture um and kill other innocent people and as long as they are like if they were all atheists then it wouldn't be satanic it would be much more acceptable according to these two blokes far out oh let's keep going enterprise is evidence of something far more militant than a mere atheism Actually, let's just do the music. This is the best part of that whole piece there. It's, it's the music. Nice music choice. All right, look, let's just wrap up here because, you know, there's so many things to unpack. I think we're going to have to do more um, Jordan Peterson reacts in regards to Marx because, look, Jordan Peterson is on a vendetta here. He's got this huge issue with Marx, like a massive problem with everything that he is about. And I don't think it's got anything to do with Marx, actually. I don't think he really believes that it's a you know a doctrine that's responsible for the killing of a hundred million people and it's evil and all this sort of stuff. I think he's got problems with people that follow in Marx's teaching, like people from today, not like you know Lenin and Trotsky and all that sort of stuff, who they talked about in this piece. But like all of his supporters um, that were Marxists at one point or are Marxists, and and like he has issues with all of them using Marxist ideas to justify issues and problems that they have but like really what he's done with this piece and this you know this dr kengor is really really lowbrow they've just come in with some subjective very very subjective opinions they've used their own personal bias which is obviously towards christianity and the religious connections in Christianity and tried to really just cherry pick some very flimsy stuff that has come out of letters and correspondence and descriptions of Karl Marx in his youth by people that use very po po poetic and romantic language to describe things, things that we're just not used to today. Like I said, there would be there would be suitable correlations in terms of language to use instead of like someone possessed like the devil, like, you know, calling someone crazy. Um, or saying they have problems and all of that sort of stuff. So unfortunately, as much as I do respect Peterson for some of his other content, like, you know, his analysis of things um, from a psychological perspective or from um, a perspective of someone who's worked in the industry, in his industry as long as he has, and someone from like, you know, a self-help background. He's pulled a lot of people kind of um, out of misery, I guess you would say, or out of a rut. Um, but, like, he really needs to stick to that sort of stuff. Like, his politics is just awful. Like, it really is just awful. Thanks for watching. Please remember, I am, you are, we are a mystery. And please like and subscribe for more.